so we are still talking about applications of uh, integration. Uh, now, last time we extended the. So, so last time we extended the definition of the area to the case where you, where we have a, a domain which is bounded above and below by some continuous function. Uh, <coughs> This was the first case. In the second case, the second extension was to consider the case where uh, you have two functions. It's not necessary that uh, one of them is larger or equal than the other one, uh, but you, uh, you look at the domain which is uh, between those two functions, which means that in some intervals, uh, uh, for instance, f of x is larger, than, larger or equal than g of x, uh, uh, then you use our uh, then you use the domain with f of x, the upper function, and g of x, the lower function, and on, the, and on other, other intervals, uh, you just exchange the role of f of x and g of x. Uh, so this was one of the definitions we have given uh, last time. So maybe uh, let's write this definition again. Okay, so if we have two functions, f of x and g of x, which are uh, continuous... on an interval a, b, then we define the area between them. So this is a definition as the integral from a to b, absolute value of f of x minus g of x dx. So last time we saw already an example. So for instance, if f of x is equal to the sine of x, uh, uh, g of x is equal to the cosine of x, and let's say we are in the interval from 0 to pi half, okay, then uh, if, you, if you plot those functions, uh, so whenever you have to solve such an example, the first step is to plot the functions. Uh, uh, so here you have uh, pi half. Uh, so the sine looks like this here, the cosine similar. Okay, so where here you have pi over 4. Okay, so, and you see that the area which we want to compute is this one. So that's the area we want to compute. Uh, and uh, by definition, th this area is defined by this integral. So uh, actually, we first define the area uh, on the interval from 0 to pi over 4. Uh, and we discover, OK, we can use the integral to, to compute this area. And, uh, 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 and we define the whole area by uh, dividing the interval into those two pieces. And uh, on this, uh, for this piece, you have to interchange the role of f of x and g of x. So this is the... Uh, Definition, but if you want to compute it, of course, this is not so complicated. So you have uh, uh, the integral from uh, 0 to pi half, and then the absolute value of uh, sine of x uh, minus uh, cosine of x dx. Uh, and uh, you, you, whenever you have to solve something like this, you have first to plot a picture in order to find out uh, how to uh, divide the, the uh, range of integration. So you see that from if you go from 0 to uh, pi over 4, okay, then the upper function is the cosine. So in this case, you have cosine of x minus sine of x dx. And actually, you see that everything is symmetric, so you get, those, uh, you get this here twice. Uh, and this integral is easy to compute. And that's how you compute such areas. Okay, so uh, this already defines the area for uh, quite a lot of... Uh, uh, domains, uh, but uh, there are still many domains which are which are left out. So uh, it's, it's uh, so the area is f for us defined for certain domains, but not for all domains. We have last time on Monday we have discussed another example of a more complicated function where we saw that we cannot define the area in the way we have we have uh, defined areas uh, so far. So uh, and that, as I have stressed, actually the area problem is not a trivial problem. It's a mo it's a quite complicated problem in general. OK. Now, uh, let's look maybe at one more, more example. Uh, 
Uh, so for instance, let's say we have two parabolas. So x is equal to y squared minus 4y, and x is equal to 2y minus y squared. OK, so the question is, find the area enclosed by those two parabolas. Now, the first thing, as always, is plotting the graph. OK, so if we look at, the, if, if we look at, this, at this parabola, the first thing is we have to understand how they lie to, uh, how they lie to, to each other. So uh, this one, y squared minus 4y. So you can write this as y minus 2 squared minus 4. OK, so from this, you see already that uh, you, see, you see that this one is, uh, is equal to 0 for y is equal to uh, 0 and y is equal to 4. So here, for those two points, uh, this parabola crosses the y-axis. And from this, we see that, that y is equal to 2. We have the absolute minimum. Uh, which is minus 4. So maybe I should write this, I should try to plot this correctly. So we have here this point. Okay, so this parabola looks like like this one. Okay, so this is the parabola x is equal to y squared minus for y. Now the other one is uh, is, is similar, but uh, actually uh, the, uh, the other one has. A, so, so this one, if you look if you, if you look at the parabola like this, that uh, y is equal to two, there is an absolute minimum. The other one has an absolute maximum. So uh, it's more convenient to write to write it in this to, to write it in, in the following form. So y square minus okay, and then we have a plus one. Okay, so it's similar. You see, uh, this parabola, so maybe using a different color, also, uh, also passes through y is equal to 0, then uh, also, uh, uh, passes to y is equal to 2, and that y is equal to 1. If you look at it like this, uh, there is an absolute maximum. So this one. So this one is, uh, is x is equal to 2y minus y square. Uh, of course, we also need to find this point of uh, intersection here. So for this, we equate those two. So y square minus 4y is equal to 2y minus y square. So we see that 2y square is equal to 6y. So we see that uh, y times y minus 3 is equal to 0. So we have the two solutions. You see y is equal to 0. We have found this already. The other one is y is equal to 3. So this is not, this is not plotted here very well because uh, uh, here those two, those two have the point of intersection. I'm not going to plot it once more. So let's just shift this point here. OK. And you see that the corresponding uh, uh, x value, so you have here, is minus 3, so also this is not correct, so let's shift this here. Okay, so, so it's, not, it's not really correct, but uh, it's not completely correct, but you get, you, you get what I mean. Okay. And now, uh, what we want to find is the area which is enclosed by those two, so which is this area here. OK, so uh, by, the, by the definition last time, uh, actually, we have to, uh, we have to divide it. Uh, so if, uh, strictly speaking, we, uh, we have to divide it. So first, this part here, so from uh, minus uh, 4 to minus 3. So here, the up, because here the upper function uh, is one branch of uh, uh, this parabola, so, uh, so for uh, the upper function is this branch here, and the lower function is this branch, then we have to go from minus 3 to 
or from zero to uh, minus three, here the upper function is the orange parabola, the lower function is the yellow parabola, and then we have still a piece left, which is from zero to one, where we have to integrate, where the upper function is, uh, is and, and lower function are both given by this parabola here. So actually, if we use the method uh, 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 from last time, you have to divide the, in order to find the area, you have to divide the integral into three ranges, and to have to integrate over all those three ranges. But uh, uh, as I have just ex explained, it's, it's, much, it's much more natural to look at things like this here, okay? to change your, your viewing angle. Okay? Because if you, if you interchange the role of x and y, you see it's getting much more easy, because then you just have to integrate from uh, 0 to 3. The upper function is always the orange one, and the lower function is always the yellow one. Okay? But uh, strictly speaking, okay, if, we look at, uh, if we look at domains like this, okay, uh, we haven't defined the area yet. Uh, we haven't found uh, uh, that you can use the integral to compute the area okay, by using the definition. Uh, uh, but uh, since this is just exchanging x and y, okay, you can similarize last time the deuce that you can use the integral uh, to find this area here. Okay, so it's, it's, in, in some situations, it's much easier to uh, interchange uh, the role of x and y and you get the, you get the, it's easier to find the area. So here in this case, uh, you see that the area of this domain uh, is given by the integral. So now we integrate over y, not over x, uh, from 0 to 3. And then the upper function is the orange one, so you have uh, 2y minus y squared minus, and the lower function is the uh, yellow one, so y squared minus uh, 4y dy. Okay, and this is not so complicated to compute, so you have here uh, 6y minus uh, 2y squared dy, so this gives uh, 3y squared minus, uh, and here you have 2 over 3y to the cube, uh, evaluated at 0 and 3, so you have 27 minus 18, and uh, uh, at the lower limits, uh, you, you have zero, so this is nine. Okay, so this area is nine. The essential thing about this example, once more, is that uh, uh, looking at it from the x direction, so looking at it like this here, is, would give a more complicated uh, uh, integration process because you have to divide your integration process into three, into three parts, uh, and, you, and in, for every part, upper and lower function are different, uh, uh, whereas, uh, if you look at the same example from this direction, the integration process is getting much more easy. Okay. So, uh, if you have to solve such examples, uh, sometimes it worth, it's, it's worth it to think a little bit in beforehand, beforehand uh, how to view the area from which direction. Okay, so any questions to this? Now, as I have explained last time, the next step is to uh, look at volumes. So uh, what we have is a, is a given solid, and uh, what we want to do is we want to compute the volume of the solid. Uh, uh, now, uh, actually, uh, similar to the area problem, uh, uh, before we, before we can compute the volume, we have to define the volume for most of these solids because uh, uh, we have, in high school, you have defined the volume of certain solids, uh, uh, but uh, uh, there are still many solids uh, where, the, where the question arises, uh, is, does it make to give this solid a volume? So this is kind of similar to the area problem. So the area problem would be, okay, you have a given domain, how to define the area. The uh, volume problem is, you have a given solid, okay, how to define the, uh, the volume of the solid. Uh, also, this problem is similar to the area problem. In general, it's very complicated. Uh, uh, we, uh, we just intend to solve it uh, or to give certain, certain easy solids here a volume. Now, uh, the approach which we are going to take is uh, similar to the area problem. So, uh, in case of the area problem, we first define the area of some simple objects. So, we started with, with the rectangle. We uh, defined the area of a rectangle by the 
uh, by multiplying the lengths of the two sides. Uh, uh, and uh, then we, in general, if we encounter a general region uh, or a general, a general, a general region, our approach was to divide the region into subregions and on any sub, uh, on every subregion to approximate the area by a rectangle, because for a rectangle we have defined already the area. Then we sum over the areas of the sub-rectangles and make the subdivision smaller and smaller. This was uh, uh, essentially the definition of the area, and for the volume we will do the same. So before we can go, before we can start defining the volume of more complicated solids, uh, uh, we have to identify some basic solids, some easy solids for which we actually can define uh, the volume. Now those easy Easy solids, the so-called cylinders. Okay, you find in our textbook a general definition of a cylinder. So, uh, 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 by using the definition in our textbook, actually also a box is a cylinder. So, uh, generally speaking, a cylinder is uh, you have some you, you have some area of some region. Okay, so you have some region, uh, and you have a region which is parallel to this region. So the same, but parallel. Now a cylinder is uh, made up, so you have, you have two regions. Uh, this is the first region, and this is the second region. Okay, and th those two regions are the same and parallel to each other, and the cylinder formally is made made up by all points which are lying on the line, which are, which are perpendicular to uh, one of those regions and are between R1 and R2. Okay? So all such objects are called uh, uh, cylinders. So for instance, this here, this is a cylinder. Okay? But uh, 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 maybe what you uh, more associate with a cylinder is the so-called circular cylinder. Okay, so this is also a type of cylinder. Here, here the special case where the uh, two regions okay, are both circles. So this, this cylinder is called circular uh, cylinder. Sometimes we also add right cylinder. Okay, right here indicating that uh, the, angle, the angle here is uh, a right angle. Okay, because, uh, uh, of course, uh, such a cylinder could also be like this here. But if you look at the uh, definition of the cylinders, we just allow... Uh, right cylinders. And another, another easy example for a cylinder is, is a box. Okay, so also this here is a cylinder. Okay, so uh, once more, a cylinder in general is uh, you have two regions uh, which are the same and parallel to each other, and the cylinder is made up by all points. Uh, uh, which uh, lie on the uh, lines which are perpendicular to those two regions and are between R1 and R2. So this is the general definition of a, a cylinder. Now, uh, why are we interested in such general cylinders? Because we can define the area of such, uh, uh, the, the volume of such cylinders very easily. We say, okay, if we know the area of the base region, okay, we just multiply it with H, and this is the definition of the volume. Okay, so for instance, in this case here, uh, the, the volume uh, would be defined as the area of uh, the region times the height. So where you, here you have the height. Okay, so this is the definition. So by definition, the uh, volume of such cylinders uh, is defined via this formula. And we are going to use this in order to define the uh, volume of more general uh, solids. Now, uh, if we have a more general solid, okay, we will, we will normally place it. So uh, for this I show you, this I show you uh, on my computer. Okay, 
Okay, so uh, here you see a general uh, solid. So if we have a general solid, uh, uh, the approach we are going to take is, uh, okay, so we, we, we place it somehow to our coordinate system. Okay, so you see over there. So first you have to decide how to place the solid uh, with respect to the coordinate system. Uh, then uh, uh, we slice it by planes, uh, which are in this case uh, perpendicular to the x-axis. Uh, uh, and uh, you see, uh, if you do this, uh, if the plane is positioned as here uh, on the slide, uh, then you see what you get is, uh, is some area, okay? This area is called cross-section. So this A of X uh, is called cross-section. Okay, so this is terminology, cross-section, this word, so you should memorize it. So uh, uh, we, uh, we slice the solid, okay, by planes, we get the cross-sections. Now, uh, what we are going to do is, because we want to we wanna define the volume of uh, such a thing, okay? So uh, what we are going to do is, so you see that the cylinder is placed on the, if you look at the x-axis between A and B. Now, uh, we use a similar approach as, to, as, as for the area problem. So what we, do, what we are going to do is we divide the, uh, interval A, B into sub-intervals, okay? Let's say, in this case, uh, seven sub-intervals. Uh, now, on every sub-interval, okay, we choose a sample point, okay? And this sample point is then the point where the, where the plane with which we slice the solid, okay, is, is passing through. So here, in this case, here you have just one of the sub-intervals from Xi minus one to Xi, and you see also the choice of the sample point. Now, uh, uh, you see that for the, for the, so now we slice the cylinder by such a plane where the plane, where the x value of the plane, which you see here is equal to, if you look at this interval, equal to the sample point. Now what you get is a cross section. And this cross section, A of x, so you have to understand uh, this area, but uh, we have discussed before how to compute area, so you, in many cases you will be able to compute this area here. Now, uh, 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 the way we approximate the original volume is, okay, we use A of X as the, uh, or the region which is given by A of X as the base region of our cylinder, and the height is uh, just the length of the interval, okay? And in, in this way, we get on every interval, here you see uh, uh, cylinders, okay? So we approximate the original thing by uh, a sum of, of cylinders. Now, uh, we compute uh, the volume uh, so we, uh, we can compute the volume because of this definition. For, for a cylinder, the volume is defined. So we can compute uh, uh, the volume of those uh, seven cylinders here. We add them up. And then we make the subdivision smaller and smaller. So we let n tend to infinity. And in the limit, uh, we will get the volume. Or in other words, we will define the volume as the limit of the volumes of those cylinders. Okay, so... Uh, 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 what we do is, okay, if, if we assume that the solid is placed such that it lies, if you look at the x-axis between A and B, then uh, we define, okay, again, a delta x, uh, which is B minus A over N. So this is the length of one of those sub-intervals here. And you have, uh, uh, you have the points xi, which is A plus uh, I times delta x. Uh, you choose a sample point x i star in the i's interval. Now what you have to understand beforehand, okay, is, uh, uh, is this function a of x, okay, the cross sections, okay. So this is a function of x. This gives you for the point x, okay, the area of, if you, if you slice the uh, solid, okay, the area of the piece you slice out. So this you have to understand beforehand, but this is an area problem. Area problem we have already discussed, so we can compute quite a lot of areas. Uh, uh, and then you, uh, you use cylinders in order to approximate the volume of the solid. So you can approximate uh, the volume of this solid now uh, as, uh, as a sum, uh, i from 1 to n. Now, uh, a, of x, a of x i... Uh, star is the area of the pace region of the cylinder. You multiply it with the height. The height is delta x. Okay. 
So it, uh, this, what you see here, is just the sum of the volumes of those cylinders here, you see. In this case, seven pieces, so n is equal to seven. Uh, and we will now... Uh, uh, the volume is obtained as limit. Or more precisely, the volume is defined as the limit. n times tends to infinity. Uh, sum i from 1 to n, a of x i star delta x. And we recognize this, okay, this is a Riemann sum. Okay, so we can write this as an integral, so this is nothing else but the integral from a to b, a of x dx. So in order that we can define the volume, what we have to assume is that the cross section, that this function a of x is a continuous function. If this is not the case, which means if the solid is too ugly, behaves too ugly, Okay, this, def this definition here does not make sense. So we have to assume that A of X is continuous. But this will be satisfied in many cases. Now, uh, so any questions to this? So this is, uh, this is just the same as for the area problem. Same approach. You see, you see that in the special case where A of X is a constant, okay, if A of X is a constant, you can take it out and what you get is if this is equal to a, what you get is a times b minus a, which corresponds with our original definition of the cylinder. Okay, so this definition makes sense. In the, uh, so it's for the for solids uh, uh, where we have already defined the volume, we get back the volume, which must be other, otherwise the definition wouldn't make any sense. Now maybe let's look at a very easy example, just that you see how this works. Okay, so let's use this in order to compute the, uh, uh, something you know already from high school is uh, uh, the uh, area of a sphere, at uh, the volume of a ball. Okay, so let's prove this formula. Now, uh, uh, the first thing we, if we prove, if we want to show something like this here, the first thing we have to do is uh, uh, we have to uh, place the object, the solid, so here in this case the ball, uh, into our coordinate system. Of course we have freedom here, but we will not, we will make life as easy as possible. So we place the solid in the origin of the three-dimensional coordinate system. Okay, so uh, if you project it then on the, on the xy plane, what you see is... Uh, is a, a circle of radius r, uh, and uh, you see that th uh, the cross sections here, now the, you have to look at this three-dimensional, so we just look at, at the ball from above. So, uh, but you see that uh, the cross sections here, so for instance, if you are here at distance x, uh, you see that the cross section, okay, is, uh, uh, is uh, it's just a circle, okay? So you just have to compute the area of a circle here. Uh, you see that, uh, that uh, this height here, Okay, because, uh, because this here is equal to r, okay, so it's given by square root of r square minus x square. Okay, so you see that uh, the function a of x, in this case, uh, is very easy. It's just r square minus x square times pi. Okay, and uh, now uh, if we plug in into the definition... So we have to uh, integrate uh, uh, x from minus r to r, or we can also go from uh, 0 to r and uh, uh, compute the, the, the volume twice. Uh, so you have here r square minus x square times pi dx. And if you compute this, so you have the integral. So this is, this is just a constant, so you have here r square uh, and from the integration, you have r to the cube uh, minus uh, so and pi minus uh, uh, 2 pi, and here you have x to the cube over 3 evaluated at 0 and r. So what you get is 2 r, r to the cube times pi minus uh, 2 pi r to the cube over 3. So indeed, you get 4 over 3 r to the cube pi. Okay, as, as is claimed by the formula. Now, uh, so, so this is what I have done. Okay, so here you see it. So, so uh, 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 we take the ball, okay, what we do is here, we slice it. Uh, again, uh, we 
So uh, if you look at the limit, okay, because we have computed the integral already, we haven't looked at the limit, but uh, the way we de define here for the ball, the volume is, uh, uh, okay, so we uh, divide the interval here from minus r to r into, uh, let's say, n subintervals. On, on every subinterval, we choose a sample point uh, uh, and uh, approximate then the uh, volume, okay? So for instance, if you choose, if you divide the interval into five subintervals, then you approximate the uh, the ball by a sum of uh, cylinders, okay? Here in this case, uh, circular cylinders. Uh, and we add up the uh, volume of those cylinders uh, in order to approximate the volume of the, uh, of the uh, sphere, and then we let, uh, we make the subdivision smaller and smaller, and the limit we, uh, we get here uh, that the uh, volume is, this, this shouldn't be A of X. This should be the volume, so that the volume is given by uh, by the formula we know. Okay. So maybe you have seen. I'm, I'm not sure whether you see such proofs in high school, but maybe you. I, I, I don't know how you have proved this formula in high school, but maybe you have seen this proof already. Uh, I guess in high school you have also observed that if you if you differentiate the volume, what you get is the surface area. This is, if, you, if you have the sphere, okay, you know that the surface area of the sphere is given by this here. Okay, so maybe in high school you have already observed that uh -huh, if I uh, differentiate the volume, what I get is the surface area. It's quite curious, okay, but actually this is something trivial. Who can explain why this is You have you have observed this in high school, right? So this is the surface area of the ball. This is the volume of the ball. If you differentiate the uh, volume, what you get is the surface area. Now, actually, uh, what is behind this here is the fundamental theorem of calculus, uh, uh, because uh, 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 you can, if you have, if you have the sphere, okay, you can, you can. Uh, uh, compute the volume like this here, but another way to compute the volume is uh, okay. You uh, you consider the sphere like an onion, okay? So it has many layers, okay? And you add up the the area of the layers, okay? So you can you can uh, uh, compute the volume as well as you integrate from zero to r, okay? And uh, uh, so you look now now at the layer uh, with radius x. Okay, but this layer has area 4x squared times pi. Okay, and if you, and you see, okay, indeed from this here. So, it's, so here you, you, you start from zero and let the, let the, the ball grow, okay, so, and you add up all the, all the layers. Okay, and here, indeed you see that from the fundamental theorem of calculus, we know that the derivative with respect to r, okay, of such, of such a thing is just, okay, so not surprising. Because high school students sometimes are surprised that there is a relationship between them, okay? But it's not not surprising. But actually, here uh, uh, this is just an explanation, okay? Because actually you have to prove because we have defined the volume here by this here, okay? By the cross section, so you have to prove that that those two are equal. Those two ways of computing the volume are equal. It's something you have to prove because this is defined by limit. This is defined by limit, okay? It's not. It's not. I mean, you have to prove strictly that th those two are the same, but intuitively it's clear. This is another, you see, this is another application here of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, uh, let's look at, at some more example, just to make this clear how uh, this method here, this method is sometimes called the method of cross sections, uh, so just to make clear how this, the method of cross sections work in order to find volumes. Uh, uh, so, for instance, uh, uh, consider the region which is bounded by y is equal to e to the minus x uh, uh, and y is equal to zero. Okay, so we have here, we have this function here, so this function is here one, then we have here e to the minus one, so we have here one. So this function looks roughly like like this here. Oh, 
Okay, so we look at this, we look at this area here. Okay, and we generate from this area a solid by uh, rotating this area about the x-axis. Okay, so we rotate it about the x-axis, and we are interested, okay, what is the volume of the corresponding uh, uh, solids? Uh, uh, now, uh, for, uh, for such examples, okay, uh, the method, this method we have, lear we have learned now, the method of cross-sections, okay, is most easy to apply, because, uh, uh, yeah, so if you rotate this in this case, it's very easy to compute the area of the cross-sections. The main thing about this method is that you are able to compute the function a of x, okay, if you're not able to compute this function a of x, useless this method. Uh, so, in, but in this case, it's very easy because the cross sections here, are, again, as, as in case of the ball, are just uh, disks. Okay, so you just have to add up here over disks. So you see that uh, 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 a of x is equal to because you see that at position x, the radius is given by uh, e to the minus x. Uh, so what you have is e to the minus two x uh, times pi. Okay, so if you are interested, and if you are interested in the volume, uh, what you have is the integral from zero to one of a of x, so e to the minus two x pi dx. Now this is not complicated to compute, uh, so actually here you can do substitution or you can compute it directly. Evaluate it uh, at uh, zero and one, so what you have is uh, uh, pi. Now. Uh, Let's reverse this, uh, so you have here pi half, one minus e to the minus two. Okay, so this is one, this is one, uh, uh, this is one uh, situation where you rotate such a given area. Another one would be, uh, you do not rotate it about the x-axis, but you rotate the whole guy about the y-axis. Okay. Which gives you another solid, and uh, the question is, okay, what is the, uh, uh, volume of this solid. So this, this just, uh, you can use this, because you actually have actually freedom how to place your, uh, how to place your solid. So now uh, we just uh, look at it from the, from the y-axis. Uh, but you see that the computation is a little bit different. Because we have to divide uh, the integration process uh, into, into one from uh, zero to e to the minus one, and then from e to the minus one to the uh, one, which are different. Uh, now, uh, in this case, this is very easy because what you get is uh, it's just a circular cylinder, so I'm not going to discuss this case. Uh, uh, so uh, what you have to uh, s still do, we, we, we just look at this piece here. Okay, so now we look at it from the y-axis. Uh, uh, so you have here. This is, this is a cross-section, and the cross-sections, again, are disks in this case. Uh, uh, so uh, the cross-section, now with respect to y, is equal to... Uh, so you see, uh, you have to solve this uh, first for y, so you have uh, uh, minus ln y squared times pi. Okay, and uh, if you compute the volume of the solid uh, by rotating the orange area about the y-axis, Okay, so you have just the, uh, the volume is equal to the integral from e to the minus one to one, and then a y. So you have uh, ln y square pi e y. So, uh, but you see, this this integral is more complicated than the the integral I just encountered. Okay, so this integral is a little bit more challenging, not very complicated. We will discuss how to compute it in the next section. Okay, so you, you see the problem here. Sometimes uh, the integrals you encounter might, might be not so easy to compute. Th this is still an easy example, but in some, si in some, in some situations you might get more complicated volumes. Now, uh, 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 all the examples we have uh, uh, seen so far are, uh, are such that uh, uh, the cross sections are always disks, okay, but it's not necessarily the case. Cross sections can be much more complicated. Uh, uh, a situation which is similar, not, not much more complicated, uh, uh, is uh, where you have a so-called washer. So let's uh, look at another example. So uh, compute the area at the volume of the solid. 
end by rotating the region and closed by y is equal to x square and y is equal to square root of x about the x axis. You, you, uh, you have to notice here that there are uh, some words are terminology here. This is a terminology. You have, to, you have to memorize this word. Also, region is terminology. Okay. So some words are here. And, and you have to say it like this. So you rotate something about, about the x-axis. OK, so if you, have to, if you have to solve this here, it's similar, of course. Uh, so the first thing uh, uh, is to figure out, OK, how does the region look like, which we are going to rotate. Uh, so in this case, very easy, uh, because you have the function Okay, so this is a function y is equal to x square, and the square root is, is here. Okay, and here you have one. So this is the area which we rotate now about the x-axis. Okay, you see that the uh, uh, if you look at the cross sections. It's not a disk anymore, but it's kind of a part of a disk. So the cross section in this case looks like this here. Oh. Okay, this is this is we call this in English washer. Okay, so the cross sections here are washers. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, and. But in order to compute a of x, uh, the area of the cross section, uh, you just have to uh, uh, look at the outer radius. So the outer radius is here square root of x. Uh, so you have this. This is the radius. So you have here two radius, inner and the outer radius. Uh, you compute the area of the whole disk, which is x times pi, and you subtract the area of the inner radius, which is x to the four times pi. Okay, so similar. Uh, now, once you have figured out this here, the rest is trivial, just integration. So the volume is now the volume from 0 to 1, uh, a of x dx. Uh, so what you have is pi times the integral from 0 to 1, x minus x to the 4 dx. And this, of course, is easy to compute. It's x square half minus x to the 5 over 5. Evaluated at zero and one, so what you get is pi one half minus one over five, and this is pi ten five minus two three. Okay, so also uh, also in in such a situation, it's not so complicated to compute the volume, uh, 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 and uh, it's also easy if you, for instance, uh, uh, do not. Uh, if you change the situation, so you, you do not necessarily rotate about the x-axis, but you rotate about another axis. So for instance, you rotate about the axis uh, y is equal to 1, uh, y is equal to minus 1. Okay. But similar, now uh, uh, there's, no there, there's not a big, a big difference. Okay. It's just the outer radius uh, changes. You have to add 1, so what you have is pi times square root of x plus 1 square minus pi times, and here you have x square plus 1 square. Okay, so there's no big difference. Uh, th so you just change a of x, and this here you can compute this similarly. Okay, so you can also rotate about other axes. Now, uh, solids which are obtained by rotation about the axis uh, are called solids of revolution. So, for instance, the ball is a solid of uh, the, the ball is the easy example for a solid of revolution because you can obtain it by rotating a region about the axis. Okay, so all solids which are generated by rotating about the uh, 
uh, given which in about the axes are called solids of uh, revolution. We have seen here now, uh, so essentially all the examples I have uh, treated so far are solids of uh, 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 revolution, and we have seen in, in all of the cases the cross sections are either disks uh, or washers, but uh, uh, of course, you can also look at uh, examples where the, where, where the solids uh, are not solids of revolution. So, uh, for instance, for instance, another easy example is, uh, okay, so uh, compute the, the volume. the solid whose base region uh, or who's, who, 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 who lies above the region for instance, the set of all x, y, such that uh, y is larger or equal than x squared, smaller or equal than 1, and whose cross-sections are equilateral or uh, even easier uh, squares. Okay, so this is not a solid of revolution, but you find in our textbook also examples which are like this. So uh, uh, the first thing is uh, okay. Let's 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 look how the uh, how this region here looks like. Yeah, but this is this is not complicated. So you have here y is equal to x square. And here you have the line uh, y is equal to 1. So the, our region is this here. Okay. And uh, the cross sections uh, are squares lying above this, this region here. Okay. So uh, uh, if, you, if you look at, for instance, at, at this y coordinate, some y coordinate, okay, then you see that uh, uh, the area of the cross section. Because you see that this length here is two times the square, uh, two times the, uh, so overall it's two times the square root of y, so you have two times the square root of y square. Okay, this is 4y. So the, the volume is very easy. The volume is the integral from 0 to 1 over all those cross sections, so 4y dy. Uh, I, should, I should add, I don't know, uh, this, this is not a circle. So, uh, this is 4 times y squared half, uh, so 2. Okay. So uh, sometimes you, has, uh, you have also examples like this. Maybe a, a more interesting example is the following one. Compute the, the volume of the solid. Given by given as intersection of two circular cylinders of radius R whose axes are perpendicular. Okay, so what is this supposed to mean? First, read it. So who understands what it's supposed to mean? So uh, you have two. Uh, I plot. I plot it maybe from above. Okay. 
I'm not very good in plotting three-dimensional objects uh, because I'm using Napier to do this. No? Uh, uh, I, so I just plot it from above, okay? So you see you have, uh, you have two, you have one, one cylinder which is like this here. Okay, so this is a circular cylinder. And you have another one which is like this here. Okay, and the, the, the one goes through the other. Okay, and they have here in the middle, okay, they have some, uh, some part in common, okay. So here, uh, there is a solid which is here, which is enclosed by both here, okay. And you have to compute the volume of the solid. The main, com the main complicated thing about this example is it's very, it's not so easy to visualize it. Okay, so, so maybe I give you five minutes, you can try to solve it. It's more, it's easier than it looks like. So, so for instance, if you look at this line here, okay, the uh, essential part is given by this, by this cylinder, not by, not by this one. So by this cylinder here. So here's kind of going down, here's also going down. Okay, but here, here, uh, somewhere in the middle, okay, the, uh, so here, here the important cylinder is this one. Here the important cylinder is this one, okay, but uh, somewhere in the middle, okay, some part will be this one, the other part will be this one. The only thing, if you solve something like this, okay, uh, such an exercise like this, the only thing you have to figure out, okay, what are the cross sections, no? For the, but for the cross sections, you have here several ways to look at it. You can look at it, okay, the cross, this cross section, okay, or this cross section, so you have different different choices. Now, uh, you observe that here this kind of, this, these lines here are important because uh, uh, here inside this triangle, okay, the important cylinder is this one. Inside this triangle, the important cylinder is, uh, is, 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 this, is this one here. Uh, this one, sorry, this one. So here, this one is the important one and here this one is the important one. Okay, so you can think about, if you try to visualize this, okay, you can think about you take a, uh, you, ha you have here two rubber bands, okay, and you, push, you, you put this, you take this here and lift it up, okay, and you do this in both directions. Now, the, the interesting part is maybe you look at, you look at this part here. So let's, let's try to plot this part three-dimensional. Now this is really a challenge for me because I'm not good in, in doing this. So, but I will try to do my best. Okay, so we will look, we will look at we, our direction okay, is this. We look at it like this here. So what you have is, so here you have one cylinder going down like this here. Okay, then here you have the other. Okay, the radius both, both times is R. Okay, and you see that here, here, here you have uh, this line which I have, which I have shown here. Okay, this line is somehow. So here you have the square, and here you have something going down like this here. Okay, now you see. The best way to do this is slice it uh, with respect to the set axis, okay? Because uh, so this is the set axis here. This is um, it doesn't matter. This is x. This is y, or maybe other way around. It doesn't matter. Okay, so you have you uh, the other way around. So this is y. This is x. Okay, so you you place this like this here. So this is what this is this part here. Now you see that uh, okay if you if you slice it uh, at a distance, for instance, this one here, so what, you, what do you get as cross-section? You go here, you go here, you go here, you go here. You get, this, you get a rectangle, square. Okay? Yeah, but this is just one part. Okay, here I have just, I look, I look just at this part here. I have this part four times. Okay? And, and also up, down. Now, uh, so this means if you have uh, if you have given if you have given this set here, okay, then uh, this length here. So if this is the point P 
and this is the point Q, then uh, PQ square is equal to uh, R square minus Z square. Okay, now it's easy. Because now you see that uh, 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 this cross section here, so A of Z, okay, is, uh, is, just, is just this one. Because it's this square here, R square uh, minus Z square. Okay. And you have, in order to get the volume, so you have to integrate this uh, from uh, minus R to R, because you have to go from, you have this also down, okay? This is just one piece, okay? Or you, you go from zero to R and take everything eight times. Okay, so it's that easy. That easy, uh, such an easy integral. The rest is, is trivial because you just have to do the integra integration. So you have 24 minus 8, which is 16, over 3, r to the cube. OK, so solving such examples, uh, even so, for instance, this example might look at the first Plans might look quite complicated, okay? It's just looking at it in the right way, okay? Now, here the most, this is certainly the most easiest way to slice it, okay? You can also slice it like this, but it's get, getting much more complicated, okay? If you slice it, if you slice it par parallel to the x axis, okay, much more complicated because you have here, you have here part of a, a, a part of a disk, okay? Uh, uh, so, so here this part would be something like, something like this here, okay? And here you have, uh, you have also here a rectangle, but much more complicated if you slice it. So the most easiest way is slice it parallel to the, to the XY plane. Okay, so you see some of those examples might be a little bit tricky. Okay, so any questions to this? We will, we, will, uh, we will develop tools uh, to uh, compute volumes uh, more easily next semester by using double integrals, and uh, then this computation will be much more easier. You do not have to think too much if you use double integrals. It's much more easier. In particular, the real challenge here is plotting the whole thing. So this, is, this, uh, this was uh, section 6.2. So you can call this method the method of cross sections. So we, here we use the method of cross sections to compute volumes. Now, in section 6.3, another method is introduced, the so-called method of cylindrical shells. So these are two different methods to uh, actually do the same thing, computing volumes. Uh, now, the reason why, why another method uh, uh, is helpful is given by the following, uh, is, is explained by the following function, which uh, which you find in our textbook. So y is equal to 2x squared minus x to the cube. Uh, so if you look at this function here, you see the function at 0 is 0, at 2 is also 0. Okay, and uh, uh, if you discuss properties of this function, you will discover this function roughly looks like like this here. Now, uh, so, for instance, so, so this point is 2 here. This point would be 1. Now, uh, we look at this area here. Okay, and we rotate this area about the y axis. Okay. Now, of course, we can try to use the method we, just have lear we, we have just learned, the method of cross sections. Uh, so, what we have to do is we have to, okay, uh, if we rotate about the y axis, okay, we have to slice it here like this. So we, sl we slice it, for instance, here. So what we have to figure out is uh, 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 how to compute, because uh, you see that the, that the cross sections are washers, and uh, what you need is the inner and outer radius. Okay, so you need these lengths here and these lengths. So you need for a given y, okay, you have to solve this for x, but this is unfortunately the uh, equation of, of a cubic equation, so you cannot solve it for x. Okay, so you... Uh, 
if you would be able to solve it for, for x, you would get these lengths here and these lengths in terms of x, and uh, in terms of y, and uh, you use the methods of cross sections. Okay, but uh, uh, this is uh, the, 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 the main, the main complica complication is arising from the fact that, uh, of course, it's possible to solve this for x, but uh, uh, you do not know the formula, and if you give it maple, you will get two or three complicated expressions. Okay, so the resulting integrals will not be complicated, will not be easy. Now, uh, the, the way to resolve this problem is uh, you just look at this differently, okay? So you, uh, uh, you compute the volume differently, not by using cross sections, okay? Now, uh, how to compute it differently? You can, uh, uh, you divide this interval here. Okay, not this interval, because for the cross sections we have divided this interval into subintervals and approximated by cylinders. Now you divide this uh, this interval into subintervals, okay, and look at uh, okay. So you divide this in sub into subintervals, and look at every subinterval. Okay, if you look at the subinterval, okay, if you look at the part which is rotated on on just the subinterval, okay, this almost looks like a circular cylinder where a hole is drilled out in the middle. Okay, so. Uh, something like this here. You have okay, if you divide this into subinterval and just look at a piece uh, uh, on one subinterval, okay. If the subinterval is very small, then this almost looks like this here, and such a, such a thing is called cylindrical shell. And we use this uh, this kind of object to compute the volume. Okay, now uh, uh, here you have two ra two two radios. Uh, the, the first one is R two. The second one, the first one is R one. The second one is R two. Uh, the vol and let's say the height is equal to h. Uh, the volume is of course easy to compute uh, because you have, you have just the two circular cylinders. Uh, so you have uh, R square. Uh, so you have h, h times pi, you can take this out, and then you have r square square minus r1 square, and you can write this as uh, h times pi, uh, r2 minus r1 uh, times r2 plus r1. So uh, actually, for convenience, we will write this as uh, uh, 2 times pi, and, th and uh, uh, we will call this here. Th this is kind of the average Average radius, okay, we will call it R times H times, and this here is kind of the thickness of the shell, okay, so we will call this delta R, okay. So the volume of such, of such a cylindrical shell is computed by uh, the, circum the average circumference, okay, so this is the circumference of the circle with radius R, so the circumference times the height times the average thickness. And we will now use, on every subinterval, we will choose a sample point. We will use the height of this. Uh, uh, we will use the function value evaluated at the sample point as height of uh, this cylindrical shell, and we will uh, approximate uh, uh, now the uh, uh, the solid by a sum of such uh, cylindrical shells, and then we will compute the volume by approximation of this volume, and then we will add n tend to infinity. And we will see for this example uh, this will lead to a more easier method to compute. Uh, the volume. So here, here's here just uh, this, this, this here. So here, here's just what I mean. Okay. So here, here the uh, the first the first plot. Okay, is, is a function like this here. You, we rotate it about the y-axis. Okay. Now the uh, the idea. Uh, uh, of course, we might be able to use cross sections. If we use cross sections, okay, the in the, the we would look at it from the from the y direction, okay, the y axis. So we would look, look at it like this here. But now we want to look at it from the x direction, okay. So what we are going to do is we divide the interval a b into subintervals. Uh, in every subinterval, okay, we choose we choose the midpoint or another sample point. But the midpoint will be convenient for us. We will see this next time, uh, and choose the function value at the midpoint, okay. And this so on this subinterval we will. We will uh, approximate uh, this area okay, by a rectangle. Now, uh, instead of rotating the area, what we are going to do is rotate the rectangle. This will give us a cylindrical shell. 
and we can compute the volume of the cylindrical shell. So we can approximate the blue thing here by the sum of the cylindrical shells. Okay? And we will approximate the volume here by the volume of the cylindrical shells. And in the limit, we will get the, the uh, 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 we will, in the limit, we will, we will get the volume. And this will essentially lead to the formula, uh, to some formula which is intuitive, pretty clear, which the integral from, in this case, from A to B, 2 pi x, f of x, dx. Okay, and you can interpret this, because this 2 pi of x is the, you can interpret this as the 2 pi of x is the circumference, okay? Uh, you can look at it uh, uh, like you slice it here, okay? The original blue area, you slice it, and you have a very, very thin cylindrical shell, okay? The very thin cylindrical shell, the volume of it is the circumference times its height, and you add from A to B, okay? You can look at it like this. So maybe for in other in applied classes, maybe this is a proof of this formula, okay? Not for us, because we have to go into details and prove it. Okay, this we will do next time. And, and you see now already from this here, once we know this, the compu computation here is much more easier because uh, uh, you just plug in, a, uh, plug in f of x. You do not have to invert first the function, which is the, where the problems in using the method of, uh, 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 of cross-sections are coming from. You have to invert this function. You do not have to do this. Uh, you uh, just plug it in here and integrate. So you, you can compute it with this new method, the method of cylinder crochets. Okay, so next time we will dis discuss uh, this in more details. We will pr prove this, and we will, I will show you, uh, I will explain you differences between this method, the method of cylindrical shells, and the method of cross-sections.